الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Dear brothers and sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to a new episode of Contemporary Fiqh Issues. We have with us again today in the studio our special guest, Sheikh Asim bin Luqman Al Hakim. Sheikh Asim, welcome. Jazakum Allah khair and thank you for having me. Barak Allah fikum. Sheikh Asim is one of the well-known callers and du'a who has traveled extensively across the globe giving da'wah and lectures to both Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Sheikh Asim, in the last few episodes we've been talking about the issue of beautification Islam and you briefly mentioned the issue of cosmetic surgery. We talked about how beautification is a form of uh, ibadah in many cases, but in some cases it can be a form of disfigurement and changing the creation of Allah. What about cases of surgical um, uh, cos uh, cosmetic surgery where someone is actually beautifying themselves through surgical procedures or for example someone who has a tattoo where they have a part of their skin cut deep and then ink filled in which permanently stays with them Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu sallam wa baraka ala abdihi wa rasulihi al-Ameen Nabiina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in There are two different types surgical procedures and tattooing, which is considered to be a surgical procedure in a sense. And if you look at the definition of tattoos, it's puncturing the skin and, as you said, filling it with ink or with special paint under the skin that lies there and becomes permanent. And I think it's, they call it the dermis, which is a layer of the skin. And this act was cursed by the Prophet ﷺ. Therefore, it's forbidden in our religion for a person to take this permanent tattoo. Even, if, even in its modern day form, it's forbidden. It is forbidden because changing the color of the skin can be permissible if it is temporary. It's for like a week or so. Like in the case in dyeing your beard or your hair and using henna to decorate a woman's hand or body, this lasts for a week, maximum two weeks, and then it fades away. Or like these temporary tattoos that they have in the West where you buy some bubble gum and you get like a little sticker that you put on. Yeah, this is okay because the duration is, is very minimal. But there are other types of tattoos that are not permanent, but they would take like six to nine months before they fade away and they take the same ruling of the forbidden tattoos. And in most cases they're also harmful, no? Most likely they are harmful, but even if they are not harmful, we have the ruling from the Quran and from the Sunnah that forbids us from doing this. The funny thing is that if you look and analyze, why do people do this? Why do people, you know, alter the creation of Allah? Why do people impulsively do things and then they regret it. So you come like 20 years later when someone is 40 or 45 years old and he looks at a, a, a sponge bob for example and says, oh well it was the trend those days, not anymore. And they would have tattoos of the girlfriends and the, the, the loved ones who they depart a week or two afterwards and they're stuck with this. Mm -hmm. All of this is forbidden in Islam. The funny thing is that Muslims now are picking it up, which was cursed at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And they're picking it up nowadays because they're influenced by the media, by the pop stars, by the rappers, by uh, the movies, the, the, the soap operas. People in the West are doing it, and they tend to feel that this is a sign of beauty. And as we mentioned before, it's not a condition for something to be completely forbidden or completely obligatory that it has to come in the Qur'an. So if the Prophet ﷺ was brought with something, Allah ordered us to obey him. 
So when the Prophet ﷺ forbids something, even if it's in the Sunnah, if it's found in the Hadith, it's still forbidden for Muslims. The funny thing is that a woman from, if, I'm, if I recall it correctly, from Bani Asad, came to Abdullah bin Mas'ud, and she said that, how dare you curse and forbid women from extending their hair, from doing tattoos, from plucking their eyebrows? And he said, why shouldn't I curse those whom Allah has cursed? She said, I've read the whole Quran from uh, cover to cover, and I have never find, found anything like this. I said, it's in the Quran. She said, where? He quoted the ayah where Allah Azza wa says, when whatever the Prophet ﷺ brings to you, you should follow, and whatever he forbids you from doing, you should abstain and refrain from doing that. And he said, and the Prophet ﷺ said that these women are cursed. So the woman looked at Abdullah bin Mas'ud and she, she, she said, and she doubted it, because like a lot of the people do nowadays, maybe your wife does this. And you're saying that the Prophet cursed women who do this? Well, maybe your wife does this. He told her, go and check my wife. So the woman went into his house and checked his wife and came back and she said, by Allah, she's not doing anything of the forbidden things that you've mentioned in the hadith. And Abdullah bin Mas'ud said, by Allah, if, you, if she hadn't, or if she had done these things that the Prophet had cursed, <laughs> she wouldn't have been my wife. So we see a common trend, uh, even from the time of the Sahaba, عنهم, may Allah be pleased with them, that people take the actions of a majority as the norm. They say, well, everybody does it, so how could it be forbidden? And this is a false way of thinking, isn't it? It is. Now, we as Muslims have a responsibility to follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Not to follow the mass of the people, not to follow the majority. We follow the Qur'an and the Sunnah because Allah will ask us on the Day of Judgment about this. And these tattoos are considered to be changing the creation of Allah and they are cursed by the authentic hadith through the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and there is no reason for us to do this and I've seen people who have small tattoos on their hands some of them have their tattoos on their cheeks or on uh, uh, their chins and when asked they replied that this is a sign of the wali we follow so it's even worse than tattooing it's an it's it's like branding mm -hmm. this human being to be the follower of xyz mm -hmm. and usually it uh, uh, um, includes a lot of associating others with allah like grave worshiping etc so it adds bad things to worse things as in the case of tattooing as the shaitan misleads people in small steps yes and, and this is why the Allah mentioned that it is do not follow the steps of the shaitan because a step is short it's not a long uh, uh, a lengthy thing so by following small steps of the shaitan this this would lead us to things that are major and more forbidden than these small steps if we can get on to the issue then of uh, cosmetic surgery, some humans or some people, they use uh, different parts, whether it be of their own human body or parts of other human bodies, or even in some cases parts of animals, for corrective means where they have a defect. Is, is this forbidden? What are the types of cosmetic surgeries? Essentially speaking, you have to always refer back to the two criteria mentioned earlier. That is, we should not change the creation of Allah for the purpose of beautification. This is not permissible in Islam, unless it is to restore what was there originally mm -hmm. and to remove a defect. So, for example, if we have someone that was born with a defect, abnormality, can we change this? Someone who has uh, 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 something in his lip. Some children are born. The doctor explained that in his report, but I don't keep his terminologies by heart. 
So if he's, the child is born with uh, a, a, um, a lip that is not normal, mm -hmm. can we correct this, this surgically? The answer is yes. If someone has something that needs to be fixed, a hip uh, deformity, uh, something in the Missing legs, finger. Um, an extra finger, or extra finger. Yeah, that you, you have to remove this. If you have a missing finger and you'd like to uh, uh, transplant something like that, this would be also permissible. So such correctional procedures are permissible in Islam because they are not altering the creation of Allah, but rather restoring Allah's creation and making things normal. If someone has is born without a nose and we give him uh, uh, um, we have the means to transplant or give him a nose. Yes, and, and make him look normal. This is permissible in Islam. Barakallah Like the issue of, uh, I believe there was a woman who was mauled by a chimpanzee in the States recently, and her, it left her face deformed. So she had some corrective surgery to make her look more uh, uh, normal again. So in that case, if that were to happen to a Muslim, it would also be permissible. If I'm not mistaken, the woman was in France and it was a pit bull. That might have been, no, no, there's another case that happened Probably in the States. Well, this yes, the, 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 and 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 they it was like about nine months ago or a year ago. They had to transplant a whole face. They did not correct oh, wow. it. See, restructuring is different. They had to uh, uh, transplant a whole face to that woman so that she could look normal again. In such cases, definitely it is permissible. Because and would it be considered desirable even? It is because it would restore the confidence to a person's. Uh, uh, self and secondly it would make him look normal again and help them to continue interaction on a social level in a normal way and this goes and cascades to all accidents that a person is is misfortune leads him to and causes him to suffer injury or he needs maybe uh, 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 facial structure restructuring so that he would look normal again Barakallahu fikum shaykh inshallah we'll continue but just after the break wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allah ta'ala Allah ta'ala Allah ta'ala Amazing stories in this program, we get to know about people of the past whose stories were mentioned in the Islamic tradition and related by the Prophet, peace be upon him. That verily us, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we tell you about the best of the stories. We tell you about the best of the stories. When we narrate a story, when we read a story, when we try to benefit from a story, what we are trying to do in reality is to go back through the steps, through the different parts and sections of this story until the story is actually completed and that we can take the actual benefit directly from the story. Sheikh Lutfi will narrate these stories in his program Amazing Stories. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one of the lands to come closer, the destination. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered one whole city to come closer, to move closer to this dead person. Amazing Stories in Ramadan on Hoda TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Sheikh Hassan, we were just discussing the issue of cosmetic surgery uh, and uh, replacing limbs that have been lost or removing limbs that might be extra in some cases or some deformities. Uh, does, do these procedures have an origin in the Quran and Sunnah that would point to their permissibility? Well, actually, it falls under the general guidelines of correcting what is wrong. And there's also a hadith where a man fought with the Prophet ﷺ in one of the battles and his nose was chopped off. So in order to correct this, the Prophet ﷺ allowed him to take a nose made of silver and attach it to his face so that he would look normal. And the man did so, 
But after a while, as you know, silver, once uh, uh, in touch or in contact with fluid, it becomes rotten, it, gives, uh, it gets green, and it has a bad smell to it. Mm -hmm. So the man complained to the Prophet ﷺ, and the so Prophet awesome. allowed him to take a golden nose. Mm -hmm. And so he did. This hadith is the basis for correcting what's need to be corrected even by attaching um, uh, artificial limbs as in the case of this companion of the Prophet ﷺ. So would this extend to uh, the limbs of uh, animals or humans? Can people uh, use limbs from other dead individuals or from animals? Now the, the issue of organ transplant is a wide issue. But to address the first question, which is, can a person use organs from animals, for example, the majority of scholars say that if the animal is permissible for us to consume and to eat, if it was uh, uh, properly slaughtered, it's halal, then yes, we can use this. Because if we can consume it, we can use it. Not like a, a pork or something or... Generally speaking. Mm -hmm. But if it is necessary to use such, such an organ. For example, I've read a research stating that some valves of the heart, the most suitable valves to cha be changed or to transplant is from taking from porks. Mm -hmm. So if this is true and actual, and there's no other animal that can substitute or be as good and efficient as the, uh, the valves or, or, or the arteries taking from uh, the pork, then it becomes permissible to use because of the necessity. Barakallahu feekum. We'd like to go on further in this issue, but uh, perhaps at a later date, if Allah permits. Um, we mentioned, you mentioned the, the verse about how a lot of people uh, slitting their ears, as was mentioned in the Quran. But nowadays, we don't really see people slitting their ears, but rather piercing them. They, they cut a hole through the ear, and then they stick in a, uh, an earring. Likewise, they do so for their nose and other body parts. What is the Islamic view on this issue? Um, some scholars said that this is not permissible because it is altering the creation of Allah and it's torturing an individual without any legitimate purpose. But the majority of scholars say that it is permissible for a woman to pierce her ears and the evidence backing this up is the hadith where the Prophet والسلام, after giving the khutbah of Eid, he went with Bilal to the women because they were far away from men, they didn't have any loudspeakers, and he gave them a khutbah for their own, and he encouraged them to give money for charity. And the hadith goes on that they started taking their bracelets and their earrings and throwing it to the Prophet as a form of charity, which meant that this was the trend of women at the time, and this is the general thing worldwide. Women pierce their ears for beautification. So if it was present in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and he didn't specifically forbid it like he did about the plucking of the eyebrows or extensions of the hair or tattoos, then it's permissible. Definitely true, because this is where we take our religion from, from the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ. <laughs> Having said that about piercing the ears, some would say, okay, is it permissible to have two earrings in one ear. So pierce it twice or three times. The answer would be nothing prevents it unless it is imitating the disbelievers, the non-Muslims. But something that's specific to them. Yes, but if, if not, it's a form of beautification. It's permissible. Going back to your question, unfortunately now a days people are extending this a bit further. So they pierce their noses, as in the case of India and the subcontinent. Mm -hmm. And they considered this to be forms of beautification. Or their lips even in some cases. Well, now if you go to Europe and, and, and to the States, you'd find horrific things. Mm -hmm. You'd find people piercing their lips, you'd find people piercing their tongues, mm -hmm. people piercing their nipples and their private parts and places you'd never imagine. Mm -hmm. And there's no reason for doing this. So all of such mutilations are considered to be forbidden because it's harmful 
it is baseless and it's not form of beautification it's form of standing in the out it's it's a form of being unique for them yes and this is forbidden in islam mm -hmm. because being unique means that you would do things others don't do just for the fame just for the heck of it and this is unacceptable in islam it's forbidden to stand out in the crowd so if someone decides if i come tomorrow and i'm wearing this pink uh, uh on mm -hmm. my head and just uh, i'd like to be unique this is forbidden in islam it's called thawb al shuhra it's it's the fame the dress of fame so that people would know uh, uh, that you are standing out of the crowd likewise certain women who choose to wear certain clothes to stand out i remember reading once uh, a question and a fatwa regarding a woman who lives in morocco and wished to wear the niqab and the isdal as they wear it in the Khalij or as they wear it in Egypt, for example, and they said, no, you should wear it as the women of your country wear it as long as you're fulfilling the obligations of the hijab. Because the object of the hijab is to have people look away from you, not to look at you. And if she's the only one wearing it, she's going to stand out more than anything else. This is true, providing that she is completely covered from head to toe and there is no fitna. The conditions are yes. met for the hijab. Yes. Um, you mentioned uh, regarding one of the essential elements of uh, cosmetic surgery that if it's done to correct a defect that's not natural. But some people also have cosmetic surgery applied in cases where they have natural, what they refer to as defects, such as aging or wrinkles, which in effect are not defects whatsoever. But what about women who want to remain uh, beautiful and pleasing for their husbands? What about having these face, lips, and nip tuck, and all these different terms that they use to basically correct their wrinkles and their age? Well, scholars say that having a facelift or injecting the face or parts of the body with uh, chemicals that would remove the wrinkles like Botox or whatever uh, chemicals they have, this is all forbidden because this is changing the creation of Allah as the suitable creation of Allah for such an age to have these wrinkles mm -hmm. and you cannot fight this forever I've seen so many actors and actresses who are like 70 like 80 years old with continuous facelift operations they look like dolls they are even worse than dolls and to the extent that you may find some of them having their belly buttons in their necks because of the facelift that's been lifting so far and so so they look ugly yet what are they fighting this is natural this is how Allah created us mm -hmm. and they should value each phase and stage of their lives when they were kids they would not want to be old and when they are young they don't want to be kids again mm -hmm. so they should value each and every stage of their lives having said that it is permissible in one case to have a facelift for example and that is when a person who's 20 years old has these wrinkles which is not natural mm -hmm. for a person in his age as you mentioned before anything that's a defect anything that's out of the normal can be restored yes but if someone comes and says like like in dyeing the hair for example someone who's 40 or 50 years old and he would like to dye his hair because it's becoming uh, white no, so this is the normal thing you may not do this if an 18 years old wants to dye his hair because his hair is becoming white for one reason or the other this becomes permissible Jazakallah khairan ya so what about like using creams though I know this uh, topic is on cosmetic surgery but what about some creams that kind of hide away or take away wrinkles through 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 chemicals or through natural uh, fruit and uh, plants again this is natural and it's something that you apply it's not a surgical procedure you're not changing the creation you're not changing the creation because usually it has a very short effect and it softens I don't think of any chemicals that would remove the wrinkles mm -hmm. either it's it will it's like a paint that hides the wrinkles and giving it a different color and this is not permissible uh, generally speaking if it's a makeup that a, a woman puts and applies this is a different story if they put cucumbers and, and, and kiwis <laughs> so that they would make it softer and or mud and uh, yeah. or something like that this is okay because this is natural it's different than having a facelift 
taking care of the, the of the skin is permissible a woman that wants to bathe in milk for example or puts applies milk on her body so that it gets it, it gives it a, a, a softer and more natural look this is permissible as long as it's not being too extravagant barakallahu feekum ya sheikh it's always a pleasure to have you on the show unfortunately we're just about out of time thank you very much for joining us barakallahu feekum and we hope to see you again next week wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh you can try to hold back the way But they will always wash upon your feet Two waters flow with a barrier in between The salty sea and rivers fresh and sweet Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Everything Allah commands to be will always become a reality. Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala.